Hi folks, in this video I'm going to explain to you the four fundamental things you can do to a golf club in order to increase your club head speed. So first we're going to learn about the uh, mechanics of how we get a stick like a golf club moving fast and you'll notice that I'm not holding an actual golf club. I'm holding a uh, uh, speed training device, it's got no face on it. This particular one's called the stack, it allows me to um, to add weight so I can adjust the, the mass that I'm swinging, I can make it lighter or heavier than a driver. Um, it's also a little bit shorter, it's about hybrid length. Um, I like that, enables me to, uh, to practice different movements with it uh, without worrying about jamming it into the ground. Um, but the reality is that when we're learning movements to create speed, oftentimes that ball and the, the, how important it is to make good contact can get in the way of, of that learning. Um, we have some natural governors built into our bodies that, that won't allow us to, to shank the ball or to top the ball. So we might be potentially making movements that could increase speed, but our brain will say, hang on a second, if we do this, we might swing the club faster, but I'd rather not uh, bury my club a foot into the ground uh, behind the ball. So our body adjusts and we don't make that swing that could be faster. So I, I think it's important to, to learn some speed movements with, with a, 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 an implement like this um, that, that can kind of remove some of those inhibitions. Now, after we learn those movements and, and understand how we can swing faster, then certainly we need to learn how to do that uh, with our driver and hitting balls. But um, I think the process of learning becomes more efficient if initially when we're trying to make speed movements, we're not, we're not worried about making solid contact, okay? Okay, so in the golf swing, we want to have as much club head speed and impact as possible. That's going to determine how far, the primary determinant of how far the golf ball goes. More club head speed, more ball speed, more ball distance. If I want more club head speed, I need more energy in the club. Okay, and at the top of the swing, I've got no energy in this club. There's no kinetic energy in this club. I need to change that kinetic energy from the top of the swing down to impact by as much as possible. In order to change the energy of something like this club, I need to do work on it. Okay? And there's two ways we can do work. We can do linear work and we can do angular work. And the linear and angular add together to give us the total work. And the total work that's done in this club is going to completely determine club head speed. Let me use a, a simpler example than, than a full golf swing. I'm going to grab this, uh, this stack here at its center of mass, okay? And we're going to talk about the, the linear work first. So let's assume that at my left hand here is where I want to get this, this, uh, this object moving as fast as possible, this object on the, on the end here, this yellow handle, okay? So I want to get it moving as fast as possible by the time it reaches my hand. We're going to talk about linear work. There are two things that determine the linear work done on the club. The length of the hand path, that's how far I'm going to be able to apply force over a distance. Okay, the longer that I can, I can apply force to this club, then the more it's going to change the, the work of the club, the more the, the work done in the club, the more change in kinetic energy, the more speed. Or I could also change the amount of force I'm applying over that hand path. So we've got the, the average force and we've got the hand path length. So let's take a look at those two. Let's assume we're going to talk about hand path length. Okay, I'm going to keep force constant. I will get this moving faster if I start with my hand lower, okay, increase that distance over which I can apply the force than if I start from here. So if I started from here and I applied a certain force, that would get a certain amount of speed in the end. If I apply that same force but over a longer distance, now I'm going to get more speed at this impact point. Okay, so I can either increase the distance that my hand is traveling or increase the amount of force that I'm applying over that distance. Those two things will, uh, those two things determine the work that I do in the club, the linear work, and that's going to contribute to a change in energy as we can see. This example of a longer hand path results in more kinetic energy in the club, more club head speed. I can also do angular work. I can apply a torque over an angular distance. So this is me applying a torque to the club right now to create rotation. Torques create rotation. And you'll notice that this rotation is also changing the speed of the end of this stick. 
Okay? So just like linear work, where we have a force and a distance, with angular work, we have a torque multiplied by an angular distance. So I would get a little bit of speed if I kept my torque constant and rotated it through this angle, which is, oh, maybe 30 degrees. I would get a little bit of speed. But if I rotated this thing through 90 degrees with that same torque, that's going to change the kinetic energy of this club more. That's going to give me more club head speed. I've done more angular work on the club. Or I could apply a higher average torque. So I could rotate it through the same angle, give a low torque, or with that same 30 degree angle with a high torque, okay, and that's going to generate more club head speed. So we have four things. We've got the length of the hand path, the average force applied over that hand path, we've got the uh, amount of rotation that the club's going to go through and the average torque applied to that rotation. Now things get a little bit more complicated in 3D with a golf swing because the club's moving all over the place and now I'm holding it at the, at the grip, a distance away from the center of mass, but the concepts still apply. I want to apply more torque, more pushing and pulling on this grip, rotate this club through a bigger angle, or move my hands through a bigger distance. That's going to be increasing the length of the the hand path or apply more average force over that hand path. Those are the four things that I'm under control of in order to change club head speed.